In this lesson, we're looking to derive and use simple identities related to Pascal's triangle. So it's pretty straightforward. This first statement here is just saying what we do in Pascal's triangle. I'll show you in a second. The two values above will add to be the number below. So these are the two above, and this is the one below. All right. So if n is if n is the row number and r is the element in the, the row. This is saying that n take 1, so we're going up one row, and we're going 1 before in the previous row, and then the same number in the previous row. These two will add up to give us that below value, which is true. So if we look quickly at this Pascal's triangle, so we've got 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, where our whole idea is that each number below is the sum of the two above it. And so we can look another one. This 3 is equal to 1 plus 2, and this 4 is equal to 3 plus 1, and so on. So what we're saying is, if this is the zeroth row, this is the first, this is the second, third, and fourth, and we always start at the zeroth term, then this being the second row, this will be, this 2 will be 2c1. And of course, this one here will be 2c0, and this one here will be 2c2, and so on. But if we go 1 up, so now we're looking at row 1, this value here will be 1c0, and this one here will be 1c1. And if we follow that rule, what we're saying is that 2c1 will be equal to, if we take 1 off, so now it's 1 in each. So we've got 1c something and 1c something. We're taking 1 away, so it's 1c0 and 1c1. So we can see that's true. We're saying that the sum of those two give us that 2c1. Let's look at one more. So let's say this one here, this 6, is in row 4, and it's a 0, 1, 2 term. So we're going to say that 4c2 will be equal to, we look at the line above, so we're going to say 3c, and we'll go 1 before, so 3c1 and 3c2. So this one here is 3c1, and this is 3c2, and we can see that those two add up to give us this 4c2, or 6. All right, so that statement is something that we use all the time in Pascal's. Now, the other one is something we've talked about previously. We're saying that the sum of all the terms in a row of this Pascal's will be equal to 2 to the power of the row number, or the sum of all the possible combinations for a given n value will be 2 to the power of n. All right, And that also gives us something else. It tells us that a set of size n will have 2 to the power of n subsets. So what that is, is a combination of all the possible sets that can be selected from 0 up to n. Okay, so that's practically the concept. We can apply this or we can use it in, in scenarios where we're looking at sets, but we'll go through a couple of examples now. So in this first example, it says given that 17c2 is equal to 136 and 17c3 is equal to 680, then we want to evaluate 18c3. Now remember, we know that ncr is equal to n take 1c, r take 1, and n take 1 c r. So if n is 18 in this case, and r is 3, then what we're saying is that we're looking at 17 c 2 plus 17 c 3. Now we know that 17 c 2 is 136, we know that 17 c 3 is 680, so it's just the sum of these two. So that will end up being 716 plus 100 is 816.
All right, so nice and simple, applying this understanding. When we look at the second example, it says, write down the n equals 6 row of Pascal's triangle and then write down the value of 6c3. So this can be a good exercise. Let's sort out Pascal's triangle. So this is a zero throw, the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth. Now, it's probably good to note that once we get down to the second row, this two, the three, the four, the five, the six, the second number in this row of Pascals tells us which row we're talking about. And so when we're looking for 6C3, this is 6C0. This is 6C1. This is 6C2. And this one here is 6C3. All right. Consequently, 6C4, 6C5, 6C6. So 6C3 is equal to 20. And this is the sixth row of Pascal's triangle, even though in terms of writing it out, it's the seventh one because we start with n equals zero. Okay, so still pretty straightforward. Now we're going to look at applying. So our first example, your friend offers you any of six books that she no longer wants, how many selections are possible, assuming you take at least one book? Okay, so that means that at least one means that we're looking at the set including one, two, three, four, five, and six, or probably the not including zero is the easiest. Because we know that n is equal to 6, we can say that, that number of selections will be 2 to the power of 6, which is all of them. And we're just getting rid of the scenarios where we choose none. So that is 6c0. So that will be 32, and we're subtracting 1, which gives us 31. Now... Again, we could do that going 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, and add them all up, and we will get that same answer. When we're looking at B, how many subsets of the numbers 1 to 10 have at least two elements? So that one's super simple. So at least two elements means that we're looking for when we have 2 and 3 and all the way through to 10. So at least two, or we can look for not including zero or one, and that's probably the better approach. So in this case, it will be two to the power of 10, subtract 10c0, subtract 10c1. And so that means we have 1024, subtract one, subtract 10. And we have 1013, different subsets that have at least two elements. Okay, so that concludes the lesson. Hopefully those examples make sense and you'll be able to now apply this understanding. Thank you for listening.